us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be ye glad for her, all ye that delight in her. Exalt and sing for joy with her, all ye that in sadness mourn for her, that ye may sunk and be satisfied with the rest of her consolations. I was glad when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. And as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be ye glad for her, all ye that delight in her. Exult and sing for joy with her, all ye that in sadness mourn for her, that ye may sunk and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <laughs>
chapter 4, beginning at verse 21. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondswoman, but of the free. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. I was glad when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Peace be in thy walls, and righteousness within thy houses. They that put their trust in the Lord shall be even as the Mount Zion which may not be removed, but standeth fast forever. They will stand about Jerusalem, even so standeth the Lord round about his people from this time forth forevermore.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them, and were these and he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And when Jesus then lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him. And he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of the bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's son, saith unto him, Here is a lad here which hath a five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, <coughs> Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took up the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and likewise of the fishes, so much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gathered up the fragments that remained, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled the twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them which had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that the prophet should come unto the world. Thus far the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
We have our Lenten services this week. <coughs> Join us Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. for evening prayer, followed by our study, which is on the music of the church. And um, we have about two more, uh, two more times to go. So we'd love to have you out for that. And then join us on Friday at 10, Vacations of the Cross and Benediction of the Blessed Sacrament, half hour of service devotion here at the church, Friday at 10. The Vestry meets next Sunday after the 10 o'clock service. Our March and April collections for outreach are again for Community Action Food Pantry, but we're collecting enough food, personal hygiene items. So please bring in what you can, anything strikes you as being personal hygiene ish. Also, some uh, Easter candy would be nice as well, so that the families can have some stuff to give to kids and, and youngsters. So just bring that stuff to the church, and you can put it in the bin, the yellow bin, or on one of the tables, and we'll get it to where it needs to go. And thank you for your generosity. It's a very uh, generous church to the community, uh, as evidenced by all the food that we've given the last few months uh, just for, for, for this. Um, and also our Amanda Hitchcad walk coming up. Don't forget to sign up for that. Uh, all the information is there in the bulletin. Please, you're welcome to take this home with you. I also sent out an email with all this information in it. So you go to UCH Foundation, sign up, you make a pledge, and then on the day of the walk, uh, we're not gathering at John Carroll, we're going to, uh, you, you walk on your own, basically, in your neighborhood or wherever you like to take your constitutional, um, and then that is for for uh, Cancer Life Net. Okay. So a wonderful thing, we've always been among the biggest supporters uh, of this, of this, uh, this event, so thank you for that. I think that's it as far as announcements go. Are there any other ones? Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. At the beginning of Lent, we look at the temptation and testing of Jesus by the devil in the wilderness. <clears throat> and we noted that in this event, which took place after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, that Jesus was recapitulating, as it were, or reliving, is another way of putting it, the 40-year period of temptation and testing that the Israelites went through while traveling through the wilderness on their journey to the Promised Land. On that journey, the Israelites grew weary and were in need of refreshment. They had listened to God, they had obeyed the prophet, you know, Moses and Aaron, and, and, they, and they followed Moses and Aaron out into the wilderness to go to the Promised Land. But during that time, their human weakness got the best of them, and they became discouraged, and sometimes even fell into grave sin. If you follow the daily lectionary readings in morning prayer, after the Easter season, we'll, you'll be reading a lot of those stories of the, the Israelites wandering in the wilderness, and you'll see a lot of the challenges and, and sorrows that they faced. But God did not call them to undertake this gargantuan journey and then expect them to complete it by their own strength and power. You know, he didn't send Moses there to, in Egypt and say, okay, Promised land is 500 miles that way. Walk, meet me there. You know, good luck. I know you can do it. He didn't, he didn't leave them to try to do it all on their own. Rather, all throughout this arduous trek to the promised land, God was with them, and he helped them. He fed them with manna and quail, and gave them water from the rock, and so forth. All of these stories that we see in the Pentateuch. Now, fast-forwarding in the biblical history, we come to the passage from St. John's Gospel, chapter 6, which we heard this morning. Here, we see something similar going on. A great multitude follows Jesus out to the wilderness, to a mountain, and the people get hungry. They're, they're so engrossed in Jesus, what he's saying, who he is, his miracles, that, you know, you kind of lose track of, oh, geez, I, I haven't eaten. I'm getting hungry here. What do we do? So now they are weary, and they are in need of, of strength. In 
following the Lord. And Jesus didn't say to them, all right, you heard everything I said, I'm all done now, so go on home, let me have some time to myself. You're on your own from here on out. You know, good, good luck finding something to eat. No, he didn't. He, instead of, of sending these people away uh, so they would starve, Jesus rather miraculously multiplies loaves and fishes, feeding thousands of people. Now, fast forward to today, the same dynamic applies to us in our spiritual lives. In our journey to heaven and eternal salvation, God does not leave us to flounder alone or make us undertake the passage to the promised land, which is heaven, all by ourselves, relying on our own strength. Rather, he strengthens us for the journey. And the way he strengthens us is with food, spiritual food for a spiritual journey. And that food, our refreshment, is the Holy Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ. The Catechism, on page 293 in the Book of Common Prayer, asks the following questions. What are the benefits of people who partake in the Lord's Supper? I'm sort of paraphrasing it there to spare you the rather ponderous uh, Elizabethan language. Uh, but what are the benefits of receiving the Lord's Supper? And the answer is, the benefit whereof we are partakers in the Lord's Supper are the strengthening and refreshing of our souls by the body and blood of Christ as our bodies are strengthened and refreshed by the bread and wine. All of the accounts of the feeding of the 5,000, which is found in each of the four Gospels, have strong Eucharistic overtones. In the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the evangelists use the same verbiage there as they do at the Last Supper. He took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and then they distribute it to everyone, everyone there. Same exact verbiage is used at the Last Supper. And while you don't see that language in St. John's account today, what we do see is this little quip this, that you just miss if you're not paying attention. It says, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. He, he puts that in there, um, and you see instantly this connection to the crucifixion and the Last Supper and all of that, as well as the Old Testament typology. Moreover, this miracle opens John chapter 6, which is a very long discourse on the body of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, and in which Christ makes reference to the manna in the wilderness, eaten by the forefathers of the Jews, and how well they, they ate that manna, and they eventually died, but if they eat this, what he gives them, his flesh and blood, drink his blood, they'll live forever. Now, if I've ever come and taken you with communion at home, you've heard this little passage here that I'll, I'll quote for you. It's in the office of the, the communion of the sick in the prayer book. Uh, John chapter 6, beginning at 47. Um, so, again, the the story we heard today is, is the very first story in John chapter 6. So the whole thing is about the Eucharist. This is what he says in verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Holy Eucharist spiritually refreshes us because it is the body and blood of Christ. When we make our communion, we receive the very life of Christ himself, the God-man, into us, and this transforms us. And as the old saying goes, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. The bread and wine of Holy Communion is no ordinary bread and wine. Rather, by the power of Jesus, 
and through the ministerial priesthood of his mystical body, the Church, these earthly elements are transformed into his sacramental body and blood for our salvation. We might think of it, maybe in medical terms, especially his precious blood, as, as though we're receiving a spiritual blood transfusion. The regular offering and reception of the Holy Eucharist is the essential devotion and activity of the faithful follower of Christ. It is the sum and focus of our religion. Receiving his body and blood, even in spiritual communion, as so many have unfortunately been compelled to do as of late, strengthens us to continue on in our Christian journey. We as believers can have hope in this life, even amidst the travails we face, knowing that as we progress to heaven and eternal life, and even when we think all will fail and that we are ready to just give up, God offers us strength and refreshment along the way. Now we might say, well, you know, someone might say, oh, I went to church once, you know, back at Christmas, near Easter. I took communion. I don't, I'm, I'm not experiencing any of this magical transforming power. You know, I, I took communion when I was a kid. Well, I mean, you can eat carrots, and that's very good for your health. But if I just eat, like, one carrot, I had a carrot back when I was 15. <laughs> you know, it's not going to do much for you. You know, it's, a, it's part of a, a health, what do you call it, a healthy lifestyle choice, you know. I had a, yeah, I took a multivitamin back, you know, when I was 20. I, I lifted some weights once. No, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it's an ongoing uh, ac activity. It's an ongoing activity. God offers us strength and refreshment along the way on this journey. We have to show up and take it. He offers us nourishment, and that is the Holy Eucharist. This, which we paradoxically both offer to God and receive from Him as the body and blood of His Son, both sustains us on our quest and brings its consummation about in our hearts and lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and thy spirit. spirit. We be, oh, praise the Lord, for the Lord is gracious. O oh, sing praises unto his name, for it is lovely. Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and earth. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven.
earth eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace. Amen. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive his sacrifice and by hand, to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. We beseech thee, O Lord, favorably to regard these our oblations, that they may effectually avail to the increase of our devotion and the advancement of our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostles taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church in the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. Grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice through the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy peace and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Our only mediator and advocate. Amen. charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, deliver of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by God's word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We religiously repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ doth unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, the worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 
she wrote so with St. John says, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. <laughs> Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved 
Father, Son, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and pay here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and that thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and features of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merit and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we, and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. And now let our Savior Christ have taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father,
that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may never more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
that unity in itself. For thither the tribes go up, even the tribes of the Lord, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we who prescribe the enemy, for the thou hast felt sick to be us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual fruit of the most precious body and blood of thy Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and as the surest thereby of thy bitter and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate, in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to the hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful God, that we may celebrate with sincere worship the mysteries which are our daily food, and ever receive them with faithful hearts, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.